Hey guys, it's Steve again. Um, I found this very cool paper called Lithium Ion Battery Degradation, What You Need to Know. And it was a very informative paper. I read it through. Um, I'm going to say I understood maybe 70-80% of it. Um, I'm not an inorganic chemist or a chemical engineer, so not really my field of expertise. Um, I am a biochemist, but it's a little far away from uh, this kind of stuff. But in order to understand this uh, picture in this, uh, which is the main picture in this paper, I had to do some background um, research and figure out how lithium ion batteries work and uh, find out some background about it so we could understand this. And I thought that it was pretty interesting, so I'd share it with you guys. All right. So this is a picture that shows kind of a schematic of how a lithium ion battery works. What you have is you have a copper charge a current collector on the anode. The anode is usually graphite. Um, sometimes they add a little bit of silicon to increase the uh, carrying capacity of the anode. So the anode's job is to hold the lithium ions in the charged state. Okay. So in the charged state, the lithium ions travel over to the anode and they intercalate in the graphite sheets. And the silicon, if you add some silicon, so Tesla and a couple other companies add a little bit of silicon to the anode, and that increases the capacity, the, how much uh, lithium ions it can hold. People have thought about using pure silicon anodes, but they have a lot of reactivity and a lot of problems. Um, so they're slowly trying to increase the amount of silicon in the anode, but mostly current batteries use graphite and a little bit of silicon. Most of them use just pure graphite. All right, so you have that on one side, so copper, and then you have the graphite anode plated on the copper current uh, collector. And then in between, you have an electrolyte. This electrolyte is usually an organic electrolyte with uh, lithium in it that is impermeable to electrons. So lithium ions can travel through the electrolyte, but electrons cannot travel with it. Electrons must find a different path to get across. Um, and then there is a physical separator that keeps the anode and the cathode from touching each other. Because if they touch each other, then you have a short circuit. Then on the cathode side, this is a lithium metal oxide. And this is where the different, when people talk about chemistries of the uh, lithium ion battery, like lithium iron phosphate, uh, nickel cobalt aluminum, or nickel manganese cobalt, or uh, uh, lithium manganese oxide, those different chemistries, they're talking about the cathode. So that tells you what's in the cathode side. So this basically holds the lithium in a stable state. And then uh, when it's charged, when you put it on a charger, the, the electrons get pushed over here through the wire. And then the uh, lithium ions travel across and intercalate in the anode. And then when you discharge it and add a load to it, the lithium ions want to go back to this area where they're more stable. And since the um, electrons can't cross this electrolyte, they have to travel through the wire and do some work before they get over to this side. So this side has an aluminum current collector um, with the cathode plated. There's an electrolyte that's impermeable to uh, electrons, and then a physical separator here, and then the anode, which is usually graphite on the current collector. All right, so why did they uh, why did they use lithium? So if you guys remember back from high school chemistry or something, lithium is one of the alkali metals. These alkali metals are highly, highly reactive. And the reason that they're highly reactive is because they have um, only one electron in their valence shell. So if you remember from high school chemistry or physics, the valence shell is the, uh, the most outermost electron shell of the atom. And you the valences, they want to be filled. They won't have. They won't be full of electrons. These guys, which are the noble gases, their valence shells are completely full, and that's why they're non-reactive. These guys don't react with other things generally. Um, these guys have one extra electron. These guys are missing one electron to fill their valence shell. So the uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, they're highly reactive as well. Lithium, sodium, potassium, they're they're highly reactive. So lithium wants to. It has one electron in its valence shell. It wants to give this up. If it gives this up, then the, its valence shell is this. The inner va this becomes its new valence shell, kind of, and that makes it stable. It's more. It's like a little happier that way. So it wants to give off this um, 
uh, electron, which is why if you um, it it, re it wants to become this positive charge ion and give up the uh, electron. And that's why it's a great battery material. All right. So this is a little graph showing over time how the um, anode and cathode material have changed. So initially in the 1970s when they started this, they worked with a pure metal lithium anode and a cathode that had no lithium. And it's kind of funny because we're moving back to this. The problem with this is that this was so reactive and the um, it degraded so fast because it would cause dendrites and all kinds of problems with the electrode. But now the, the holy grail kind of is to get a solid, not a liquid, but a solid electrode. And if you get a solid electrode, you can move back to a uh, pure metal lithium anode and a non-lithium cathode. And then you have much higher density and then you don't get the dendrite formation because it's a solid electrode and you can get high cycle life. So that's what quantum scape and uh, um, solid battery, those guys, they're trying to work on a solid state battery. We're moving back to this. But because this was so problematic with liquid electrolytes, people tried various different chemistries. And then you see like lithium iron phosphate is here, uh, li lithium manganese oxide, lithium cobalt oxide. So this was one of the original ones, but cobalt's super expensive and very reactive. And so then we moved over here. And now we know like Aptera is using NMC811, which is a relatively new chemistry. Then NCA, that's what uh, um, Tesla uses in their batteries. And then you see like there's, gra first we had the liquid, excuse me, the pure metal lithium anode. And then we went to graphite. Uh, and then they started adding some silicon to it. So that we're, that's where we're at. Okay, now that we kind of sort of understand how this works, we can go back to this paper and figure out what causes um, battery degradation. Okay, so the green things are the major things that cause the uh, battery degradation, and the purple things are the, um, the secondary things. So what you have here is this is the anode, so the negative electrode, this is the anode side. So it's kind of flipped from the previous picture. This is the anode. This is the copper current collector. Here's the aluminum current collector. And this is the cathode. The cathode is, let's see, in our case is uh, nickel manganese cobalt, NMC811. Um, that's what it would be. And then there's a physical separator and then elect, uh, a liquid electrolyte in here. So what happens as you charge it, you get this thing called a um, solid electrolyte interface around these particles and that that binds up some lithium so you lose some lithium it's permanently bound in these things and so there's not as much lithium uh, able to go back and forth and then this um, you can get lithium metal plating so it's the lithium instead of getting into the graphite and intercalating the graphite it forms on the surface of the graphite this happens when you're charging at cold temperatures uh, because then at cold temperatures, the graphite is not able to accept the um, lithium ions as well. And also if you're fast charging. So if you're fast charging, it's trying to push the um, lithium ions in there as fast as it can. And sometimes they can't push it in there fast enough. And the lithium builds up as a metal um, and it plates on there instead of intercalating in there. Then the real problem is, is you get this thing called dendrite growth, which is like little spikes of metal lithium grow. And if these spikes penetrate the separator, then you get a short circuit. And then this, um, this, this cell becomes either non-functional or can have thermal runaway um, and, and burn. So that's, that's not good. But this SEI layer is, um, is basically locks up some lithium and that's bad. Then um, thermal cycling causes particle fracture on both sides. Particle fracture opens up more surface area for these for the surface solid electrolyte interface to happen. And then you lose more capacity that way. So eventually over time, these particles all start fracturing. So after like thousands and thousands of cycles, you have so much particle fracturing and so much of this SEI layer formation that more and more lithium is bound up in this layer formation. And then it doesn't it just doesn't work. You can also get oxidation of the um, electrolyte and then that causes structural disordering because it reacts and you get like hydrofluoric acid and it reacts with the uh, lithium metals oxide on the uh, cathode side and that causes loss of, um, uh, of lithium that can be used 
uh, effectively in the battery. Okay, so I, I thought that was interesting. So the main take home points are that uh, thermal, good thermal management is really important for a battery because that reduces the amount of particle fracturing that happens. Um, so, but you, you can't avoid it. Eventually with charge disc charge cycles, you will get particle fracturing and then you cause this SE, SEI layer formation. And then the other thing is charging at cold temperature. That's why they want to, before batteries get fast charge, um, you want to kind of preheat the battery to its operating temperature. You don't want to charge it when it's fully cold. And then fast charging just generally isn't good for your battery. You shouldn't, you shouldn't fast charge unless you need to. Um, so mainly like trickle charging or so level one, level two charging, that's what you want to do to the battery to extend its life. Fast charging is, will cause this, um, will cause more thermal, um, stress on the battery, more particle fracturing, and also, uh, increases the risk of this lithium plating and dendrite growth, um, which is bad. Okay. Well, that's what I learned from, um, reading these papers. I will link this, uh, battery degradation paper below. Um, this is a very interesting paper. I think it's worth reading for those of you that are interested. And then uh, thanks for watching. Hope it was interesting. Comments below. Um, I always learn a lot from your comments. And thanks, as always, to our supporting members. And have a nice day, everyone.